Today we're going to be talking about weather conditions and forecasting. And when we think about weather, we think about the state of the atmosphere at a given time and place. So this is the weather activity that we observe from one place at one specific time. Not over a large period of, period of time or over a large area. This is one place, one time specifically. And there are multiple different factors that work together to produce the weather that we see on Earth. These are temperature, wind, cloud cover, precipitation, and pressure. And there is one driving factor that influences all of these, and that is the sun. The sun is the driving force of weather and weather factors. A meteorologist is a scientist who studies weather. So we're going to be meteorologists today, and we're going to look at all these different factors and how they're related to the weather that we see on Earth, and also how we can use those to predict future weather. There are many types of weather data that can be collected. These are cloud cover, which can be considered in, for, in what form of clouds we see in the sky. There are multiple different types of clouds, and also how much of the sky is being covered by these clouds. It can be partly cloudy, partly sunny, cloudy or sunny, either one. So the cloud cover is one thing that we can consider to help us collect data about our weather. Precipitation, which is directly related to cloud cover, is another thing that we consider. Precipitation has to have a cloud to occur, but clouds do not always produce precipitation. So we can collect cloud, we can collect information about precipitation depending on also the clouds that are in the sky. Another type of weather data that we can collect is wind speed and direction. So we can look at and observe where wind is coming from and where it's going, as well as how fast the wind is moving in our atmosphere. We can also consider temperature on Earth. So we can consider the temperature of the air around us, which is dependent on how much solar energy is in our atmosphere. We can also consider air pressure. Air pressure is the weight of the column of air above a person or an object. So we can also collect data about air pressure. All of these factors that we just talked about are related in some way or another. And they're all unified by the one driving factor in the atmosphere, which is the sun. Because the sun affects all other factors in the atmosphere. So the sun affects temperature, air pressure, wind, cloud formation, and precipitation as well. Temperature is directly related to air pressure and cloud formation. The higher temperatures increase the movement of particles in the air and makes the air rise, increasing the air pressure. Air pressure is directly related to wind because areas of high pressure push towards areas of low pressure, which is when we feel a breeze in the air. Temperature is related to cloud formation because as, it, as heat is added to the air, it rises and it cools. Once it cools to a specific point called the dew point temperature, the air cannot hold any more water vapor, and so the water vapor in the air condenses to form a cloud. Cloud formation then leads to precipitation sometimes. So precipitation to have precipitation, you definitely need a cloud, but not all clouds will produce precipitation. There are multiple different types of instruments that can use to collect what that can use to collect weather data. We can use a barometer, which helps us measure air pressure in the air. We can use an anemometer, which helps us determine the wind speed in the atmosphere. We can use thermometers to determine the temperature of the air. We can use a rain gauge to observe the amount of precipitation over a period of time. So this will be left out for an hour or a day and it will measure how much precipitation has occurred in the past hour or day. We can also use a wind vane to determine the wind direction. data to predict weather. That means we use our data to, you, we put it all together and try to predict or forecast the weather that we will experience in the near future. Some ways that we can do that are considering high and low pressure areas. When we view pressure areas that are high in pressure, that usually means that fair weather will occur. If you have pressures of low pressure areas, they're usually associated with poor weather. So you might get rain, thunderstorms, um, lightning, things like that with low pressure areas. When we have a change in um, 
wind direction or speed, that's a sign of changing pressure. So that can lead either to good weather or bad weather, depending on the trends of the pressure that we are observing with our wind. We can also absorb, observe cloud types, and this can help us predict what kind of weather will come. So some types of clouds foretell precipitation. This means some type of clouds are usually associated with certain types of rain, thunderstorms, or drizzle or snow. Weather patterns repeat themselves, so we can look at past data to help us predict. So we can look at data from yesterday, from a year ago, or from a decade ago, and we can compare those with patterns that we're seeing today to help us predict what kind of weather we might experience in the near future.